Nick Cage put on a freaking clinic. He had fun with this. He was off the wall, over the top. This is incredibly campy and fun. Hey everyone, welcome back to Canon Cinema. I'm Amanda, otherwise known as AMX NDA Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. Today I will be reviewing Renfield. And I was so freaking excited to watch this. I, I love vampire novels, I love vampire movies, I was a fan of Twilight. I've read Interview with the Vampire, which is one of my favorite Anne Rice novels. The movie's so good. Bram Stoker's Dracula I also read, um, and the movie is so freaking good too. I really enjoyed that. A bit long, but it was so, so well done. I think the Universal Monster movies are a lot of fun. I think we need to bring the horror comedy back because I'm not saying that like the art house horror movies that A24 has produced, they're not like strong or they're not good. I just think these characters are a lot of fun and there are different perspectives that writers can take, which they clearly did in Renfield, which I really enjoyed just because you get to see a different angle. It's not all about Count Dracula. It's more about Renfield, obviously the title character. So in this story, it is loosely based from the original book from Bram Stoker's Dracula, because you do have Renfield who kind of plays his, you know, his sidekick, his servant. And Count Dracula sends him to do his bidding. Since Dracula can't be seen during the day, Renfield goes out and gets like his victims, but they have to be like very pure. They can't be evil people. So you have like the good and bad coming in and balancing out when he has to choose his victims. But Renfield does majority of the killing. And he came in because they say in this movie at the very beginning, which they did like an old timey black and white, which I really enjoyed just because you're literally going back to the roots of the character. And Nick Cage is absolutely fantastic as Count Dracula. He chewed up so much scenery. He literally became Count Dracula. And I want to see more of him. I think if this does well, hopefully it does well. And Universal gets like a fairly good reception. I think it has like a B minus on uh, cinema score at the moment. Rotten Tomatoes, not so bad. But I do think that like we need Nick Cage to be in another like Dracula solo movie. I think like that would be a lot of fun to have. He's just fantastic in this. So what had happened at the very beginning is that Renfield wanted to make a better life for his family by working for Dracula. He was a lawyer and he wanted to just make more money. And he knew that the count is like really high up there. And he thought that it would work. The more time he put in with the count, the more he realized what he truly was. So in the book, which was really cool about Renfield is that he starts like eating bugs and he thinks that he's gaining the same strength as Dracula, which is kind of like a Stockholm syndrome where you're so close to uh, the person where Dracula is not human. He's not human. He's immortal. He's a different being. And Renfield plays this human that kind of like evil builds within him. So it's very different. And they explain that in the book and they kind of show that in the movie that evil takes a different form or bad being bad takes a different form. And Renfield kind of loses himself. He doesn't see that what he's doing for Dracula is bad. He's being controlled by Dracula. He doesn't have a choice. He doesn't speak out and defend himself. That's why he ends up going to this group therapy session. Now, this group therapy session, the whole point of this film for Renfield and Nicholas Holt plays it extremely well. He's a very underrated actor very underrated. I like that he goes for these like really weird obscure roles because he does fit the bill and he just shines on his own. It's a charm that only he can bring to certain characters and this is definitely one of them. So he goes to this group therapy session and he needs to bring victims home. He needs to bring them home to Dracula but instead of choosing the pure victims that are within the group therapy session he's listening to their stories about their bosses or the, the you know their ex-boyfriends and stuff like that and instead he goes to the bosses that are like tormenting them because he can relate to them because he hates his boss so it turns into something different where he's really trying to just get advice and how to change his life around and go back to what he originally wanted but Dracula kind of taunts him and says, you can't, you made these decisions on your own. You're also bad in your own way. Other than like children being inherently good, 
adults have made decisions that have a little bit of bad in them. It's like you're making these decisions, you know? Not everyone is pure of heart. Not everyone is good. So that's what they're playing around with in Renfield. And I thought it was just very refreshing. Even though the movie isn't like fantastic because it does lose its footing in the middle a bit with the whole Aquafina storyline and, you know, the Lobo storyline, the crime lords that come in to play and with the cops are trying to bust the, the crime lords in the city and then Dracula and Renfield get mixed up in all of this like that whole chunk was a bit like overly long they really tried to stretch it and they tried to connect everything it wasn't that great but it's still enjoyable because of the character interactions it is funny when it needs to be the gore the violence oh my god these action scenes are so so fun to watch and you're laughing you have sentimental moments throughout with aquafina as rebecca who plays the cop because her dad had died at the hands of the Lobo family. So she's been trying to crack down and get them into jail for a very long time just to kind of pay back her father. And in this case, when Lobo gets intertwined with Renfield, Renfield sees Rebecca, played by Aquafina, and he looks at her like some kind of hero. But she also looks at him as a hero because he ends up saving her life in like this massive like shootout in a restaurant. That coming together made sense because of what he was looking for in himself and he saw what he wanted to be in Rebecca. That's fine. However, the chemistry between Nicholas Holt and Aquafina was just like non-existent. That's what was really like, it was hard to kind of sit there with them because they ate up majority of the screen time. But when like Nick Cage would come in or Ben Schwartz would come in, like they both lit up the scenes. They lit up the movie and they were hilarious. I know that a lot of people say that Ben Schwartz plays himself, but like all I can hear is Sonic at this point. That's fine. I love him as Sonic, but it's like, he's really funny. Ben Schwartz was really great. So he impressed me in this as well. Not that I wasn't impressed before, but for Ben Schwartz and Nick Cage to be the ones to kind of steal the movie, like to be on par with Nick Cage. Yeah, for sure. So there are great elements to Renfield. Uh, the story needed a bit of work. I think that we were missing more of what happens between Dracula and Renfield. I would have liked to see a bit more of that. Maybe like a flashback to when Renfield was starting out with Dracula, his family. That was like surface level, just brushed upon. They never really went into it. I understand that the runtime, you know, it's kind of hard to fit all of that backstory because only an hour and 30 you're just focused on Renfield at surface Renfield just wants to get away from Dracula he thinks that he can become a hero but he actually can't that's it they really worked in a different perspective they still tied in the lore from the original story they were kind of self-aware of the vampire mythology and they worked that in as well with like vampire hunting and weapons and what could actually kill a vampire like it was a lot of fun. Just because I think for a good decade, we did have like Twilight, we did have the Vampire Diaries, vampires, werewolves, all of that stuff, which is, we're hot for a good decade. So we know so much of what goes into killing a vampire or, you know, what they they need, you know, to be invited in and all of that. I thought the inviting in stuff was hilarious because it was subtle but effective. So you had those like little moments that we know about Dracula sprinkled throughout this movie and it's not in your face. I value that there's a different perspective here and through the eyes of like Renfield, I thought that was really smart. At the end of the day, I was very impressed with this. It's refreshing, it's a damn good time and we need more monster movies. I want more monster movies from Universal. They're doing something really different. I have been very fortunate to go to these press screenings and I've loved every single thing that Universal has put out this year so far. So I'm really looking forward to what else they have on the slate. So I give Renfield a three and a half out of five. It is a good time at the movie theater if you want something different. You want a little dash of horror. It's very violent, very gory. There's blood spurting everywhere, but what can you expect from a vampire film? Like it's so a lot. But yeah, kudos to Nicholas Holt. Put him in more things. Please, for the love of God, put him in more things. He deserves it. He deserves a leading role in like a big franchise. I swear to you, the man deserves it. 
And also Nick Cage put on a freaking clinic. He had fun with this. He was off the wall, over the top. This is incredibly campy and fun. It's just so enjoyable. It's a good time and it's entertaining. I had fun with Renfield. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You can always follow me over at AMX NDA Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. Let me know what your fave Nick Cage movie is down below in the comments. And if you want to help this channel grow and build this community with me, there are ways to do so below. I'll catch you guys next time. Keep watching movies.